Book One, Chapter Eight of Les Misérables, translated by Isabel F. Hapgood. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kalinda. Les Misérables by Victor Hugo. Book One, Just a Man. Philosophy after drinking. The senator above mentioned was a clever man, who had made his own way, heedless of those things which present obstacles and which are called conscience, sworn faith, justice, duty. He had marched straight to his goal, without once flinching in the line of his advancement and his interest. He was an old attorney, softened by success. Not a bad man by any means, who rendered all the small services in his power to his sons, his sons-in-law, his relations, and even to his friends, having wisely seized upon, in life, good sides, good opportunities, good windfalls. Everything else seemed to him very stupid. He was intelligent, and just sufficiently educated to think himself a disciple of Epicurus, while he was, in reality, only a product of Pigot le Brun. He laughed willingly and pleasantly over infinite and eternal things, and at the crotchets of that good old fellow the bishop. He even sometimes laughed at him with an amiable authority in the presence of Monsieur Muriel himself, who listened to him. On some semi-official occasion or other, I do not recollect what, Count Blanc, the senator, and Monsieur Muriel were to dine with the prefect. At dessert, the senator, who was slightly exhilarated, though still perfectly dignified, exclaimed, "'Egad, Bishop, let's have a discussion. It is hard for a senator and a bishop to look at each other without winking. We are two augurs. I am going to make a confession to you. I have a philosophy of my own.' "'And you are right,' replied the bishop. As one makes one's philosophy, so one lies on it. You are on the bed of purple, Senator. The Senator was encouraged, and went on. Let us be good fellows. Good devils, even, said the Bishop. I declare to you, continued the Senator, that the Marquis d'Argent, Pierin, Hobbes, and Monsieur Nejon are no rascals. I have all the philosophers in my library gilded on the edges. Like yourself, Count, interposed the Bishop. The Senator resumed. I hate Diderot. He is an ideologist, a declaimer, and a revolutionist, a believer in God at bottom, and more bigoted than Voltaire. Voltaire made sport of Needham, and he was wrong, for Needham's eels prove that God is useless. A drop of vinegar in a spoonful of flour paste supplies the fiat lux. Suppose the drop to be larger, and the spoonful bigger, you have the world. Man is the eel. Then what is the good of the Eternal Father? The Jehovah hypothesis tires me, Bishop. It is good for nothing but to produce shallow people whose reasoning is hollow. Down with that great all which torments me. Hurrah for zero which leaves me in peace. Between you and me, and in order to empty my sack, and make confession to my pastor, as it behooves me to do, I will admit to you that I have good sense. I am not enthusiastic over your Jesus, who preaches renunciation and sacrifice to the last extremity. Tis the counsel of an avaricious man to beggars. Renunciation? Why? Sacrifice? To what end? I do not see one wolf immolating himself for the happiness of another wolf. Let us stick to nature, then. We are at the top. Let us have a superior philosophy. What is the advantage of being at the top if one sees no further than the end of other people's noses? Let us live merrily. Life is all. That man has another future elsewhere, on high, below, anywhere, I don't believe. Not one single word of it. Ah, oh, sacrifice and renunciation are recommended to me. I must take heed to everything I do. I must cudgel my brains over good and evil, over the just and unjust, over the fa and the nifa. Why? Because I shall have to render an account of my actions. When? After death. What a fine dream! After my death it will be a very clever person who can catch me. Have a handful of dust seized by a shadow-hand, if you can. Let us tell the truth, we who are initiated, and who have raised the veil of Isis. There is no such thing as either good or evil. There is vegetation. Let us seek the real. Let us get to the bottom of it. Let us go into it thoroughly. What the deuce? Let us go to the bottom of it. We must scent out the truth, dig in the earth for it, and seize it. Then it gives you exquisite joys. Then you grow strong, and you laugh. I am square on the bottom, I am. Immortality, Bishop, is a chance, a waiting for dead men's shoes. Ah, what a charming promise! Trust to it, if you like. What a fine lot Adam has! We are souls, and we shall be angels with blue wings on our shoulder-blades. Do come to my assistance. Is it not Tertullian who says that the blessed shall travel from star to star? Very well. We shall be the grasshoppers of the stars. 
and then, besides, we shall see God. Ta, ta, ta! What twaddle all these paradises are! God is a nonsensical monster! I would not say that in the moniteur, egad, but I may whisper it among friends. Interpocula! To sacrifice the world to paradise is to let slip the prey for the shadow. Be the dupe of the infinite. I'm not such a fool. I am a knot. I call myself Monsieur le Comte Knot, Senator. Did I exist before my birth? No. Shall I exist after death? No. What am I? A little dust collected in an organism. What am I to do on this earth? The choice rests with me. Suffer or enjoy. Whither will suffering lead me? To nothingness but I shall have suffered. Whither will enjoyment lead me? To nothingness, but I shall have enjoyed myself. My choice is made. One must eat or be eaten. I shall eat. It is better to be the tooth than the grass. Such is my wisdom. After which, go whither I push thee. The grave-digger is there. The pantheon for some of us. All falls into the great hole. End. Finis. Total liquidation. This is the vanishing point. Death is death, believe me. I laugh at the idea of there being any one who has anything to tell me on that subject. Fables of nurses, bugaboo for children, Jehovah for men. No, our tomorrow is the night. Beyond the tomb there is nothing but equal nothingness. You have been Sardanapalus, and you have been Vincent de Paul. It makes no difference. That is the truth. Then live your life above all things. Make use of your eye while you have it. In truth, Bishop, I tell you that I have a philosophy of my own, and I have my philosophers. I don't let myself be taken in with that nonsense. Of course, there must be something for those who are down, for the barefooted beggars, knife-grinders, and miserable wretches. Legends, chimeras, the soul, immortality, paradise, the stars are provided for them to swallow. They gobble it down, they spread it on their dry bread. He who has nothing else has the good. God! That is the least he can have. I oppose no objection to that, but I reserve Monsieur Nagion for myself. The good God is good for the populace. The bishop clapped his hands. That's talking, he exclaimed. What an excellent and really marvellous thing is this materialism. Not every one who wants it can have it. Ah, uh, when one does have it, one is no longer a dupe. One does not stupidly allow oneself to be exiled like Cato, nor stoned like Stephen, nor burned alive like Jeanne d'Arc. Those who have succeeded in procuring this admirable materialism have the joy of feeling themselves irresponsible, and of thinking that they can devour everything without uneasiness, places, sinecures, dignities, power, whether well or ill-acquired, lucrative recantations, useful treacheries, savoury capitulations of conscience, and that they shall enter the tomb with their digestion accomplished. How agreeable that is! I do not say that with reference to you, Senator. Nevertheless, it is impossible for me to refrain from congratulating you. You great lords have, so you say, a philosophy of your own, and for yourselves, which is exquisite, refined, accessible to the rich alone, good for all sauces, and which seasons the voluptuousness of life admirably. This philosophy has been extracted from the depths, and unearthed by special seekers. But you are good-natured princes, and you do not think it a bad thing that belief in the good God should constitute the philosophy of the people, very much as the goose stuffed with chestnuts is the truffled turkey of the poor. End of Book One, Chapter Eight. Recording by Kalinda in Raymond, New Hampshire, on November thirtieth, two thousand seven.